Hey guys, welcome to episode number 577. Today is Monday, so it's update Monday, and today we are outside in the greenhouse. And if you can hear that noise, that's running water. We have had two beautiful days outside in the 60s, and I was able to turn the water on to my greenhouse and my aquaponic system behind it. So we're gonna walk through the setup, we're gonna walk through everything I turned on, and we're gonna walk through everything that I'm planning to plant here in the greenhouse this spring and into the summer. But before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you wanna help support this channel, you can always go check out myaquariumbox.com and bettaoasis.com. A lot of people don't know that at Better Oasis, we also sell aquarium plants. So go check that out if you want to buy some hardy, easy aquarium plants. We've got new inventory every single week, so make sure to check back for some really nice fish and plants shipped direct from Florida. Anyways, guys, let's get to it. We got a lot to cover. It's actually getting dark out as well. And of course, today was a rainy day. So come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. All right, look at this giant mess. <laughs> oh, the water actually has not been this low in the 1,000 gallon pond for quite some time. In fact, all throughout the winter, it was all the way up to the tippy top. And only when I dropped my pump, my pond pump back in and turned on the power, did this water level drop. And I would say it's dropped about a third of the way. It's about 300 gallons that's been pumped up uh, from this pond into the greenhouse. Now we'll go take a look at the bins in the greenhouse full of water pumping in just a minute. But as you can see, our overflow here, the return line um, to the sump area is going nice and strong. We're getting a lot of oxygen and aeration in the water. And as you can see here, we've got some water movement along the top of the pond as well. That's the bypass on the pump line uh, blowing some of the water around in this pond. The rest of it, of course, is going through that black tubing underneath our retaining wall that we built last year underneath my collection of nets and up into the greenhouse itself so we disconnected our big linear piston air pump and instead we plugged in our pond pump once again now as we get rocking and rolling this spring i may turn the air pump back on I think if I do that, I would probably build some sort of shelf uh, on the inside of the greenhouse up high, which would allow me to run like an airline, uh, like a PVC airline loop around the top of the greenhouse. And that would allow me to put uh, airlines and air stones into any of the tanks that I wanted. But for now, uh, I think I don't really need that. So uh, we're just gonna save a little bit of uh, energy and do with just the pond pump. How did the retaining wall do? How did the plants do out here? They're fine. I think they'll grow just fine this uh, spring and into the summer. Uh, I didn't notice anything too detrimental over the winter. We didn't have a very rough winter, to be honest. Uh, it was fairly warm. We didn't get feet and feet of snow. Uh, and it didn't stay like super bitter cold for very long either. Uh, so junipers do really well uh, throughout the winter here in New England. The only thing I'm wondering is if these guys are gonna actually get enough sunlight throughout the summer. So that's the one thing we'll keep an eye on and uh, we'll have to check out. Now the leaves are a constant battle back here. I usually sweep this patio off every couple days, but it's not too bad. Uh, I do need to get probably another bag of sand and uh, get maybe like a, a sweeper or a tamper and tamp a little bit more sand into this now that it's had a chance to settle. Uh, it was really important to let this go through like an entire winter cycle of thawing and 
uh, ice and snow being packed on top of it to help all of that sand uh, settle, to help all of the water that was draining off sort of make that sand settle. And I think it's at the point now where it's basically locked in. Uh, I remember right after I put it together, some of these pavers were a little loose and now they're, uh, they're not that bad. So with a little bit more sand, we should be in pretty good shape. Now, the million dollar question, did the goldfish survive? Yes, they did. Uh, I used some of my big Sarah nets here, pond nets, and I was able to scoop out a lot of the leaf litter that was on the edges of the inside of this pond, and I did catch at least three or four, four goldfish, and they were all alive, they are all healthy, swimming around, and uh, yeah, I think all of them probably survived. I won't know for sure here until I do a big water change on this system. Uh, I haven't done that yet. It's something that I'm gonna do this week once the water warms up a little bit. It's still pretty chilly here, and the water, when I turned this on the other day, the water was shockingly really, really cold still. So I guess that's probably a good thing. It means that all of my insulation is actually working and it's keeping the water cold when the surrounding ground is cold and vice versa, it'll keep it warmer uh, as well. So not a bad thing, but uh, it just it's gonna take some extra time to warm everything up. And the best thing that I did to do that is actually to turn the pump on because the greenhouse is basically a nice warm uh, environment and the water that are in those 60 gallon Laguna tubs on the inside get a chance to warm up. There's warm air all around them. So they warm up and then when the water spills out here, it warms up too. So this is what it looks like for right now. You can see there's some nasty scum on the sides. What I'll need to do is just come around here with a brush and uh, sweep all that out. And then I'm gonna do a big water change to get rid of the green water that we see um, in, in this tank right now. I was kind of shocked how much algae growth there was in here. Even in the middle of winter, there was an algae bloom, which is crazy to me. I would think a lot of the algae would be dormant, but nope, it was green water all the way through the winter. So we'll do a big water change on here. We'll clean it up, we'll siphon off the bottom, and uh, hopefully we can get to see the actual fish that are in this pond uh, within the next few weeks. Once it warms up enough that we can get some fish shipped, what I'm looking to do is get some goldfish shipped. Um, I may go someplace local. I may get them online. I don't really know for sure yet, but I'm looking for a few different species of goldfish to stock this pond. I was sort of torn between going for um, more of like a, a native fish or going for some koi or going for goldfish. In the end, I sort of decided that a thousand gallons is a very large tank, but it's not very large when you talk on the scale of koi. So I wouldn't really be able to house more than a few big koi in a pond this size. It's only a thousand gallons, it's only four feet deep. So um, it sounds like a lot, and if it was indoors, it would be gigantic, but when it's outdoors, it's not actually that big. So goldfish stay quite a bit smaller. I can get a good school of probably a couple dozen goldfish in this pond and really enjoy them throughout the summer months. What goldfish am I gonna get? Well, I haven't done a ton of research on goldfish yet. However, I do know that they can survive the winter here now, which is good. Uh, the goldfish that are in here currently are just your standard run-of-the-mill uh, feeder goldfish, comets, whatever you want to call them. Um, I got them from Petco like two or three years ago when I did my 55 gallon chop and flip barrel aquaponics experiment. They survived that, they survived the winter uh, in the fish room, and now they survived the winter out here in the pond. Now that I know goldfish will survive, I'm ready to pick up some nicer goldfish, some more expensive goldfish, and hopefully those will do just as well. 
Now, I do want to get something that is able to avoid predation. There are great blue herons in the area. There are raccoons in the area. And when this water is back up to the top, raccoons would love to fish for some goldfish in here. So I don't want to get anything that has, you know, a bloated or distorted body. I'm really not a big fan of any of those types of goldfish. I don't want anything that has gigantic fins where it can't uh, propel itself and escape from predation. What I want to get is something that's hardy, that is a fast and good swimmer, and uh, won't have any problems uh, escaping if it was to be uh, attacked by something else. So uh, I think the front runner in my mind right now is the Joaquin goldfish, W-A-K-I-N. It seems like it's a little bit uh, rarer of a goldfish species, at least in the US, but it is very um, striking and it has uh, shorter fins and it's a faster swimmer, but it has some really nice uh, coloration too. So Joaquin goldfish, if you guys know of anyone that has them uh, in the New England area, I would definitely be interested. But I think that may be what goes in this thousand gallon pond. Now, as you can see, we've got some cleanup to do in this area. One big thing that I want to do is fence this pond in. Uh, I want to make sure that no one stumbles into this area. I want to make sure no animals get in here by accident. And I may even install some sort of wood or log or something to allow some animals to escape uh, as well. You wouldn't think it would be a problem, but it definitely could be a problem. So uh, what I want to do is make sure this is a safe and secure area. And now that it's set up and running, uh, this is the time to do it in the spring. All right, enough talk out here. Let's head into the greenhouse itself while we still have a little bit of light left. And let's check out the inside of the greenhouse. All right, inside the greenhouse now. It's uh, quite a bit warmer in here, which always amazes me. Even on overcast, cloudy days, where there's no sunlight, hardly at all, it's still quite a bit warmer in here, which is awesome. And even though we get longer days, more sunlight out of the days in the summer, I'm always up later than that. So what I was thinking of doing as an addition to this greenhouse this year is to find some sort of either waterproof or vapor proof shop light and hang it down the middle of the greenhouse and just use it when I'm out here at night. I do have two um, lights currently in here. One is over there and one is over here. These are solar powered and they've got the little sensor on them so they'll kick on uh, when the sun does eventually go down. But what I find is they don't hold a really good charge. They don't really have a very uh, large solar panel or battery. And so they don't last more than like 20 or 30 minutes usually. It's basically a fancy version of a garden light that you would see uh, along a pathway. So those don't really cut it. And what I do want to be able to do out here is work while it's dark out. You know, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. I think it would be kind of cool to shoot videos out here. So that's what I'm thinking. We install some sort of vapor proof shop light uh, down the middle here and uh, we could turn that on and off whenever we want. We've got the power still here temporarily run. That's actually one project that I have to work on here sooner rather than later is to swap this over to a trench, uh, trenched electrical so that I'm not just running on extension cord so I can make it official, make it a little bit more permanent. And uh, we do have a three pronged power plug here, which has the uh, watertight um, seals on them. So we can plug in up to three things out here in the greenhouse. So I'm thinking we've got the water pump, we've got the air pump, and if we've got a shop light, that would be everything I would need out here. All right, so let's take a look at all of these tubs. These things have been shut down for the entire winter. Um, 
I drained all of them out before the winter and they've been empty in here all winter long. Now, when I went to go turn on the water pump, all I did was I stood here and watched all of these things fill and just checked for leaks. The water line comes in over here. That's the same black pipe that's dug underground. And then all I have are these one inch ball valves which go to each of these tanks. And all of these ball valves are actually fully open and they do a pretty good job at uh, turning over the water in these tanks. Now, the only other place I have a ball valve is back over on the water pump as a pressure relief and that's what's causing some of that water to sort of spin around on the inside of that pond. I was able to adjust that, fine tune that, to get it to the right point where I wasn't overwhelming the amount of water coming into each one of these tubs and uh, I was able to relieve the pressure on the pump in the process. So it's a pretty good mix, pretty good balance. The pump I have in the water in the pond is a little bit oversized for what I'm doing now. Uh, if I didn't have that bypass, these would probably be spitting too much water. However, if I'm ever to set up another um, rack of these tanks over on this side, I think it would be the perfect amount of water flow. So we've got that going for us. We're planning for the future. And speaking of planning, we got a lot of stuff going on on the top here. We got a lot of stuff to look at and we don't have a whole lot of light. But these are the three junipers that I'm going to do bonsai style. Um, they were in here all winter long, the baby junipers and I didn't water them all winter long but now that we're out here and it's warming up uh, basically all I do is I take a little bit of water here I could just water them and then the water drains back straight down into the tubs so that's working out pretty well these uh, plastic shelving levels uh, are working out pretty well and uh, I can just pick those up and move them around uh, as I need to. So we haven't done any cutting on these yet. We're gonna wait for new growth to appear and uh, then we'll we'll do a little bit of research into bonsai before we start hacking and slashing stuff apart. Now we do have a lot of net pots sitting around empty and those are in preparation for our seeds. We haven't started that yet. It's something we're gonna start here in the next few weeks. I will shoot plenty of videos on the topic but I'm really hoping that I can get a lot of seeds planted in these net pots and growing so that I can start to build some rafts, some floating rafts, to go in these tubs to house some of those plants. And we also have these seed trays that didn't work out uh, down in the basement for whatever reason. The seeds, you know, maybe the seeds that I use, I don't think that they were uh, chilled or overwintered or anything like that. So they might not have been uh, primed to sprout. I also might not have kept them um, you know, moist enough to, uh, to germinate. So in any case, we've got these two um, still ready to go basically. And what I'm gonna do is take some of the terrestrial plants that don't do so well in aquaponics and try to plant them and maybe transfer them outdoors. Maybe get some bigger pots with soil and uh, run some of those up along um, the sides of the greenhouse. And then we just got some more floating baskets and some more little net pots. So what are we planning on growing? We've got a lot of seeds. We've got a good variety of seeds. Um, we've got some green beans. These uh, are not gonna do very well in aquaponics, I don't believe, but they will do really well uh, at growing up the sides of the greenhouse. So hopefully if I get a couple of pots of these with soil, um, I've got a constant supply of water to feed them if I need to, and hopefully they do well uh, climbing up the sides of the greenhouse. What else do we got? Ah, we got some squash, some zucchini squash. These, again, not gonna do well in aquaponics, but I'm hoping I can start some in here in the greenhouse and then move them outdoors for the rest of the summer. Same with the summer squash. And between these two, I should have, hopefully, enough to feed my plecos throughout the winter, or at least the fall months. This is the first one here, cilantro. 
that I'm going to try aquaponics style. Uh, I'll probably plant like half of a tray of these and see how they do. We've got some more herbs here. we got some rosemary. This stuff's pretty hard to kill, so hopefully I can end up growing it. Basil as well, really easy to grow. We got some lettuce, also really easy to grow. Uh, I think this is actually the easiest thing you can do aquaponics style. So I may end up doing the most of this even though it's the least exciting. And we also have some hot peppers. Hopefully these grow. I'm gonna give them a shot and see how they do. So that's that. Oh yeah, and then we got some free uh, some free wildflower seeds from uh, the Cheerios box or whatever. So I'll throw those outside. I'll just scatter them outside and see what happens. Um, in terms of these net pots, we've got two inch pots and three inch pots, and then we've got little cubes of rock wool with a little hole in the middle. So what I'm going to do is stuff these smaller pots full of a piece of rock wool, stuff a seed right in the middle. And then what I'm going to do is lay them all out in these tubs, which I've got all over the place. And then I'm just going to mist them and keep them uh, moist. And hopefully we get some growth on those plants. And I think the goal is to eventually transfer those to a deep water culture bed where I've got a sheet of styrofoam and I've got holes cut out. So I can just stick all of those net pots nice and neat in rows on that sheet of styrofoam with all of that root growth going down into the water and all the leaves going up into the greenhouse. So that's the idea there. We got all the supplies we need. We just need to wait a few more days for it to get warm enough in order to make all of this happen. And then we got the larger net pots and we got a lot of this hydroton or hydrocorn or whatever you want to call it. It's the clay based media. It's really lightweight. Some of it floats, some of it sinks, but uh, I've got that for some of the larger pots so that I don't need to use quite as much rock wool. So I'm gonna experiment with a lot of this stuff. I've never really grown with net pots before. If you have any suggestions on what I should do or what I should try, let me know. I got everything set up here, ready to rock and roll. I'm really excited about it. So that is the inside of the greenhouse. All right guys, and that is the quick tour of the greenhouse of the aquaponic system and the progress that I've made this week to get prepared to start my seeds. As you guys know, I built this entire system last fall and I never really got a chance to use it, which was such a huge bummer. But now that it's set up, I've got it running as early as I possibly can. Everything is ready to go, so I'm really looking forward to one full year of using this greenhouse. I'm super excited. And of course, I'm also going to be breeding fish in the greenhouse. We've got the goldfish outside in the big pond, but indoors here, we have uh, six 60 gallon Laguna tubs, and at least three of those are gonna be full of fish. I haven't decided what fish yet. I've asked this in the past, I'll ask it again. If you guys have any suggestions on what fish you think I should breed out here, I've got three tubs, so I can pick up to three species of fish to breed in these tubs, along with growing all of the plants. Now, there are plenty of other YouTubers out there, aquarium YouTubers, that have greenhouse-related videos and summer outdoor breeding setups and I want to mention a few because they are definitely inspirations for what I'm putting together here. So hopefully you can go check out their videos, learn something from what they're doing, and I know that I have already learned quite a bit from them. A few of those channels would be Rachel O'Leary has an awesome greenhouse. She grows a lot of carnivorous plants and she did a lot of shrimp outdoors last year. I'm really excited to see what she does this year. She has a greenhouse very similar to this in shape and size, and she's got a lot of stuff going on in that greenhouse. Also, Michael from Michael's Fish Room has a number of outdoor tubs, and he breeds guppies outdoors 
in New England every summer. I'm really excited to see him at the NEC this weekend, and I'm also excited to see what he's able to breed this year outdoors in his backyard and in his summer tubs. Also at the NEC is going to be L.R. Bretz. Lucas is attending the NEC. I'm excited. It's the first time I've seen him at that show, uh, which is happening this weekend, by the way. He also has a number of outdoor tubs. If you go check out his videos, he has a ton of outdoor tubs all over his back deck. And it sounds like he's gonna make even more this year. So hopefully all of those people are very successful with what they're doing. If you know of any other channels that are making greenhouse, summer tub, outdoor fish breeding videos, definitely let me know. Share it down below so everyone can go check out those videos and learn from each other. There's so much to do in the aquarium hobby and I'm really excited to be doing some of that stuff outdoors and doing some of it as a sustainable thing to grow vegetables at the same time. I'm really excited to see where it goes. Anyways guys, with all of that being said, make sure to check out the NEC, the Northeast Council of Aquarium Societies annual auction. If you live anywhere in the Northeast, if you live anywhere in New England, this weekend you need to be in Cromwell, Connecticut at the Red Lion Hotel for the NEC's convention. If you can only go one day, make sure you're there on Sunday for their giant mega fish auction. I've made plenty of videos of that auction in the past. It's basically the biggest fish auction you're gonna find in New England, and you can get a lot of really cool stuff for your aquariums, for your planted tanks, for your ponds, everything, all in one spot. My aquarium box is also going to be there as a vendor, and we'll have a booth set up all weekend long. So if you wanna visit me and chat about fish and aquariums and YouTube and anything else, you can find me this weekend at the NEC's annual convention. I think the online registration's already closed, so if you haven't got your tickets yet, make sure to call in advance, and uh, also when you attend, I think you're gonna have to spend a little bit more money uh, to pick up tickets in person. But if you only have a day, and you don't wanna spend any money, you're always welcome to attend the auction on Sunday for free. I think a bidder card costs a dollar or two, but after that you can bid on as many fish as you want, and hopefully you also bring your own fish to enter into the auction as well. And if you do that, I believe the bidder card is absolutely free. It's a lot of fun, and I hope to see you all there. So, we've got a lot more to do out here in the greenhouse, but this is about all we're gonna get accomplished for the night. The sun is setting and uh, it is pretty chilly outside. So I'll be at the NEC this weekend, then I'll be back to working on this greenhouse, getting all of my plants planted, getting all of the fish set up and my water changed and everything else. This is gonna be a big project and I'm really looking forward to it. Anyways guys, as always, if you wanna help support this channel, you can go check out myaquariumbox.com and also bettaoasis.com. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.